Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. From when? Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. I am your host, David, and joining me today, we have DC Danes. Good night, mate. How are ya? Good. And also, Hawk, because I wanted to leave him to last. Hey, guys. So, hey. um, on the roster today, we have the Doctor Who finale, which aired last night. Iron Sky and the Halo games. So we'll be sort of covering over those as we go. Um, but off the bat, I'd just like to say you need to jump on Facebook, go over to the Save Sci Fi page, and give us a like. We need more likes. Lots and lots of likes. I like likes. Likes are, likes are nom nom. Yeah. I'll save that for cake. <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> And the show is off the rails. Oh, Forty-five I'll, I'll, seconds. I'll in. settle. I'll settle for likes <laughs> that I can win things on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So, anyway, we've lost it already. I, I this is totally derailed. I've lost. I've lost my point. <laughs> was that thirty seconds okay. this time? It took uh, us five minutes last time. <laughs> oh come on, guys. Let's get on with the show. Okay, Doctor Who finale. What did we think? And. I'd like to hear from DC first. What do you think, DC? Um, I think I'm going to bow out right now because I haven't seen the last five seasons. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> You're only five years behind times. Oh, <sighs> dude, I started writing about then. <laughs> <laughs> you got to sacrifice things you love to do other things you love. I keep saying I want to sacrifice my wife. Maybe I'll be able to watch Doctor Who instead of having a wife. Will that work? That sounds like a fair trade to me. Yeah, cool. I'll try that. I'll let her know. <laughs> Probably also a lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah, I reckon. <laughs> All right. So, Hawk, what do you think of the um, finale of Doctor Who? Why is my brain just going... <sighs> Normally it takes half an hour for that to happen. Uh, I can't believe how good it actually was. Yeah. They left me wanting more. That's pretty much all I could say. The Cyberman twist we covered last in last week's episode continued, yet I wasn't expecting and this is spoilers if you haven't seen it yet. I was, nano... just, about the, I was just about to do the whole spoilers thing and say, by the way, spoilers, if you don't want to hear anything about the last episode of Doctor Who, jump forward about 10 or 15 minutes in the podcast and hopefully we won't still be dribbling on, dribbling on about it. No promises. We're down one guy who likes to dribble on about it, so it shouldn't be too hard tonight. Yeah, that's a fair point. <laughs> um, no, the whole nanomachine rain bringing all the dead back to life as Cybermen that have been raiding Tony Stark's tech cabinet was a pretty nice touch. Yeah, it was pretty cool. The, I don't know what it is about the Cybermen recently. But the last couple of seasons, ever since they moved away from the t tenant era, um, what were they? What were they? Cyber C Cybermen or something like that? The, the Cybermen from the alternate universe with the the C on the chest. Ever since they moved away from that, they've looked more and more Iron Man, haven't they? They have. It was at the start of last season when Clara got introduced that the they first brought in the Iron Tech styled Cyberman. Yeah, and admittedly, they do look cool. I'm not arguing with that. It's a nice touch. There's actually a couple of photos online. If you look around, you can actually find someone's Photoshop the Iron Man colors. So yeah, <laughs> the golden, that took all of the golden red. That was funny. That took all of 20 seconds after the episode aired uh, last last season when we first got to see them like that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, the the, the flying effect. What did you think of the flying effect? I sort of. Yeah, I, I don't know. 
it brought back Shades of Iron Man 3 to me, no. but I actually enjoyed that movie, so I'm probably a little bit yeah, not yeah. the person to be talking to about it. Okay, so we've officially classified you as broken. <laughs> Anyone who enjoys Iron Man 3 is broken. I'm sorry. The only thing I didn't like about Iron Man 3 was the uh, Mark 42's colour scheme. Okay. The invert part looked like... It made it look like crap. Yeah, fair point. So, anyway. Iron Man's meant to be more red than gold. Yeah. Okay, back to Doctor Who. Um, what did we think of... <laughs> Talk uh, about Doctor Who. Yeah, we, we should really talk about Doctor Who and not Iron Man. We oh, really should. It's I not just, working. Okay. I just typed in Cyberman. Iron. I, I talked about Cyberman, Iron Man costume, and there's a steampunk cyber, Iron Man costume that looks absolutely brilliant, and he looks like a Cyberman. Why am I like not surprised? <laughs> Uh, um, the, another brain fart. Anyway, what I would the the way I would have loved to see the master. I can't remember if I touched on this last week. I would love would have loved to see the master reintroduced as not a crazy person. Like I would have loved Missy to be one of the other female time lords, and had the master reintroduced as part of a story where the Doctor assumes the Master is the bad guy. The whole way through the story, the Doctor is trying to work work against the Master and, and stop the Master and help wh whoever. And then right at the sort of the, the, the climax of the episode, you realise the Master was actually the good guy in the story. And the Doctor in this, this story is the bad guy in the story and they've got to sort of swap. And the Doctor sort of swaps sides and joins sides with the Master for a bit. I think that would be would have been a better way of introducing the master since it's post sort of the master now is after the event that made him crazy it's not too sort of far stretched to sort of make him sane if you know what I mean like he's been fully reborn again again I know a million times but it would I think quirky master is it's sort of like one of those low hanging fruits it's easy it's an easy target to hit not saying she, she did a brilliant job, don't get me wrong. Brilliant job. But, yeah, I'm just sort of a little bit disappointed by that, more than anything else. Oh, and they killed Nerd Girl. What was her name again? Bowtie? I never actually got her name. But... Bow, bow ties are cool. That was awesome. Shades of Smith. Yeah. Um, yeah the, the... Um, my question with this, regarding the Master... Is are we going to have another one because Missy got disintegrated by a cyber, by that Cyberman? The so you mean um what's his face the the Brigadier the Brigadier General Lethbridge Stewart the the Brigadier Cyberman <laughs> yeah well I actually watched the Doctor Who extra um for that episode and one of the things that it set, talks about on that is that. Stephen Moffat loved the old master and how he was definitely, definitively killed at the end of every episode he was dead. Dead and gone, never to be seen again. And yet, the next episode, he would pop back up and he'd be like, how did you survive? And he's like, because I did. Trade secret? <laughs> yeah. He's like, so how did you survive? I escaped. And that's it. And he, and he said he, he's going to love doing that with in this series. And I think, it's a little bit cheap. It's a little bit 80s. It'd be better if he sort of dated it. But that said, did you see the visual effect they used when she got shot? Yeah, it looked yeah. like a, like a teleport out thing. It, didn't it? So I'm thinking, was it part teleport and part actual damage? And are we looking at a regen situation again? I, I don't think she got damaged at all. She'll, they're they're going to keep her. She's a brilliant actress. And she played, like I said, she played the role perfectly. I'm just I'm sort of annoyed that they used that chance for um, the master on that as opposed to doing it in a different way. But yeah, you get that. There's always always chance for more of what you're hoping for. Yeah, of course. But yeah, I just like it how she claims the doctor is her boyfriend, which is sort of weird. Creepy. Yeah. Hi, we've been we 
We've been male we've been... forever, and we've been best friends forever, and now I'm a girl, and I love you. Here, how's the army? Be friends. It's like, wait, well, wait, back up. What? <laughs> <laughs> and Cyber Danny. That was pretty cool. That The makeup effect on that was fantastic. He looks... It's not often we get to see inside a Cyberman. Yeah. And it looked very sort of... Um... He looks very dead. Very sort of manky and upgraded. And the fact that he sort of sacrificed himself in the, at the very, very end and went up, flew up in the sky, killed the clouds, um, was back in the cloud thing, Majiggy, and then instead of allowing himself to survive and live with, happily ever after with Clara, he sent the kid out that he accidentally killed. I thought that was... That was sort of a very, very him thing to do. If you know what I mean. He's all he's been all about looking after the kids. Yeah. And was that because of his mistake or was that just him being him? It was him trying to repair his mistake. He made a promise and that was him fulfilling the promise. And I think the promise he made was something along the lines of, I'm sorry, I'll do anything and everything I can to sort of recover this i'll give myself a thousand times to recover this bad deed that he's done and sending the kid out instead of himself was sort of the ultimate sacrifice in that regard so yeah um wow it is really boring without stuart he yammers and yammers and we give him shit for it but i'll tell you what there's no pauses if i want to think also... i just tune out and <laughs> let him go. But we, we will have to give him some grief over not being here tonight. Cause, yeah, we will. I mean, it's great having da Danny as well, but talking Doctor Who with Danny just doesn't quite work, given he hasn't seen it. No, because I've actually got the headphones off my head and I'm looking at Iron Man, Cybermen and Iron Man Aliens. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just posting them all over my Facebook page so when you finish, you can have a look. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm missing out on now. <laughs> Woohoo, we have a listener. Hello, listener. I can see you in the chat. We love you. Wait, and what? they're gone. <laughs> Oh, you're not trying to scare him. <laughs> so, yeah, the the program allows me to open the chat. If you're in the chat and you're a guest, you should be able to to type and say hi if you want to. And if you want to chip in, we're quite willing to discuss anything you want to throw up. Yeah. <laughs> so bad. So yeah, bad. you're good. Yeah, that could have come out better. <laughs> <laughs> but even that can sounds wrong. <laughs> I give up, I can't win tonight. <laughs> uh, okay, so end of the end of the episode, how would you rate that how would you rate the finale two parter or hell just the second part of the two parter compared to the rest of Capaldi series and do you think it's a good sort of bookend for Clara's story and a good sort of stepping stone on Capaldi's doctor's story? I think it is, because at the very start of the series, he posed the question to Clara, am I a good man? And he's been gruff, he's been every bit and piece along there, trying to figure it out, much like Matt Smith was trying to figure out what his new taste buds wanted, and shows on fish fingers and custard. Yummy! Yeah, if you're uh, born on another planet, maybe. Yummy! But, again, he's been trying to figure it out, and he finally got that resolution he wanted. And the answer was a resounding, no, I'm an idiot in a box with a screwdriver. And that was sort of very fitting, considering the journey he went through. There was a couple episodes that were very sort of average, but you could tell what they were trying to do with the stories, and while the story didn't execute the point well, it still sort of covered it for the most part. So, uh, I think that pretty much concludes the Doctor Who talk. Cause... Well, the only thing I want to throw out there is we still have a little bit more of Clara left. She does have a bit of a role in the Christmas special. Not sure what, but she does have that. 
So we probably won't have any more Doctor Who for uh, here until that comes out. Actually, here's a question on the note of the companion. You're tasked with casting the next companion. What would you do for their character? Would you have them from Earth, from a planet, future, past? Where would you go with that? And don't say River Song, because I'll kick your ass. Oh, please. Do I look like a River Song fan? fanboy i couldn't i never really liked the matt smith era why am i gonna sign up with her because <laughs> everyone i talked to today said river song <laughs> and i'm just like why just just why the story's done move on <laughs> so, so... Uh, if i was going to pull up with anything from a one of the other minor characters introduced for doctor who it would be jenny that cl that female clone of the doctor. clone daughter of his That'd from be cool. Tenant era. You want to if I could pluck someone from this series, I'd pluck the mechanic from the um the mummy on the the space train Orient Express. Mummy on the Orient Express. Murder on the Orient Express. I got it. Took me a little minute. My brain is still jumbled. That was an interesting episode. That yeah. one. Yeah, I'd love to get the engineer guy from that because he played with the Doctor really, really well. As a potential companion, he for me, it'd be right at the top of the list. Um, but I would personally, if I was going to choose someone, I'd have someone either from the distant past who doesn't understand sort of tech, culture, anything like that, and someone from the future. Maybe not too far in the future. Maybe only sort of like a couple of hundred years. Almost Captain, almost like Captain Jack, but not Captain Jack because there can be no other Captain Jack. Um, well, I agree on that. So someone from the past, like, say, Victorian era. Oh, that's no, where I thought that... Go, that's... go further than that. Go back Roman. Go back way, way further back. They've that's... already done that, though. Yeah. They've already gone that far back. They won't go that far again. Yeah. But someone sort of thing like that, and for the other person, or someone from that sort of culture, current time frame, but from a different planet, so completely different culture altogether. Yeah. That'd also be pretty cool. But the and then with someone that from the this, near future. This this doctor is so relatively unhinged from Earth. It's it might be hard to sort of get that connection again because the old, I, admittedly the the stories since even as far back as Tenant's era, the stories have revolved around the companion. And I think with Capaldi, what they're trying to do is they're trying to shift gears back to what it used to be. Around the Doctor. Stories around the Doctor. No impossible girl companion. No sort of... No bad wolf. Um, no the Doctor Donna. Um, no the girl that waited. They, they, they really need to sort of shift gear away from that. And if I was going to do a companion, I would have it as a random person who just happens to save from Santa Claus, presumably. Random bloke for a goddamn change. Yeah, and a... Yeah, but a random bloke. Um, I have I have in a minute, but I am getting sick of the female companions. Yes, I understand that it's all good and well to put them in that light, but I am, honest to God, getting sick and tired of the damsel in distress moments. Although, I have to admit, oh, my Clara's... Oh, my other ankle! Ah, oh, both my ankles! Sorry, I was I watching Angry that... Beavers earlier today. Let's not go. Yeah, enough said. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to admit that Clara's uh, bluff of the Cyberman pretending to be the Doctor towards the start of last night's episode, fantastic yeah. idea. Yeah. Because <laughs> it really screwed with the Cyber's brains. Well, what sort of strategy would you take against Cybermen in that scenario? You're locked in a room with a Cyberman that knows you're there. It's, it's sort of like... Bullshit mode activated. Yeah, effectively. <laughs> Yeah. There's no other way to survive it, really. Or you just start telling them um, illogical statements like one plus one equals seven because because the potato flew with the banana, and you just watch them stare. They go, "Wait, um, what?" <laughs> it's confusing. Say what? <laughs> so, anyway, I think it's about time we jump to the first ad break, I guess, um, and that'll lead us into Iron Sky, which Danny can join us in. Yay! Yay! So. Assuming he's actually seen it. <laughs> yes, I've seen it. All right, anyway, I'm bringing on that break, so I shall see you guys on the other side. 
Before, before there was dust, before the air became poison, before the companies, strays, dragon smugglers and thieves, will they prevail? WWW the Star Crystal, remember, dare to blink and it may all be gone. This is Admiral Varric. Turn over the fugitive and the Romulan Star Empire may consider showing you leniency. Go to hell! You and your crew have been through a lot the past six months. I wish I could say that it gets easier, but it never does. Six months on a mission to bring back Tamar on a whim that it might change the tide of the war in our favor. The issue is the intel that she's brought us. The Romulans are building a weapon of mass destruction. Two light years from Earth. We're getting telemetry from the Samir, the Vulcan ship that was sent out. Five ships, two base structures. Obviously, this must be stopped at all costs. This is the captain. I know that we are preparing to go into a dangerous situation, but we have done the work and we are ready. I couldn't be more proud to be serving with you. Lieutenant, maximum war. Are you successful in recapturing the fugitive? The Earth vessel Enterprise intervened at the last moment. The fugitive must be stopped at all costs. Whatever it takes. Who we are. What we are. We should never lose that. Vulcans. Romulans. Humans. Are any of us really that different? Bridge, that last hit knocked out the port in a cell. Best I could give you is impulse. 22 casualties reported so far, sir. 15 fatal. I want you to know what it feels like when your world burns like mine did. That is the only reason you are still alive. Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host David and joining me still is DC and Hawk. We're back. Yo! Hey. <laughs> you hear the over-enthusiastic DC there. He's, he's, he's ready and raring to talk about Iron Sky. <laughs> so, Sorry. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, for those who don't know, Iron Sky is a um, movie that came out when was it what two three years ago now and the effective premise of it was let's take as many random conspiracies as we can and sort of cram them into one nazis from space field movie and yes we got Damn seven, it in 2012 2012 so like three years, years. Th- yeah almost three years ago two oh. years ago whenever it was yeah. anyway mm. um you've got what they got they went they got bigger uh Sorry, my brain just died again. It does that. Anyway, we go back to the moon and we take one of the astronauts that goes up there is actually like a pop star or something. And he goes up just for a celebrity shoot to sort of say that the Sarah Palin president, and yeah, Sarah Palin, Sarah Palin was president in this. It's every bit as retarded as you think it would be. And then some. And then a That's little a... bit more. Because it's Sarah Do you Palin. know, the, the funny thing is, I actually quite liked it except for the male model the dark male model i know that was the comedy part but that's what drove me nuts 
Yeah. I actually quite like the whole idea behind it and everything else. Yeah. But that male model, black male model, just kept coming in and it was just like, ugh. Yeah, it was a fairly sort of annoying character. But admittedly, the, the visually-wise, it was... Considering the budget, it was actually really good. But story-wise, it was very... Yeah. It needed help with the it needed help with the execution, but it had so much potential. Well, the biggest problem with the execution was there was too many fingers in the pie by the end of it. They they've just started their kick their Kickstarter for their second movie, which is um, Iron Sky: The Coming Race. And one of the things they highlight in that is they want to be crowdfunded for the whole thing because they got sick and tired of having to change and chop the story for all these investors. And they say about a third of the main things they get critiqued on on a regular basis are because of those investors changing bits and pieces. At one point, there was going to be Mickey Mouse and Santa Claus on the moon. Yeah, I read that. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> now that's just going a bit too far. But that said, yeah. Dundee 1. Every time I hear Dundee 1, it makes me giggle. Every time. I know. About bloody time, Australia got a freaking spaceship. <laughs> and even then, it's still like a, like a freaking beer can. <laughs> it's even funnier. <laughs> well, what else would you expect us to come up with? <laughs> you've got, the, you got the, was it the George, the George Bush, which is their American spaceship. And then everyone else rocks up, because it gets itself in a lot of trouble. And it's getting its ass kicked. So it tries to get out of there, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere... All of these other ships turn up. I guess spoilers would be too late now. Ruined it. Ha ha. Need to watch it. Yeah. Anyway, um, all these other ships turn up. And at which point, President Palin, or whatever her character's name was, I can't remember. I'm just going to call her Palin because that's who she was. Um, gets all pissy at everybody else for, for making these spaceships. And they turn around to her and they're like, um, like you've got, you can talk. <laughs> you've got one. She's like, yes, but we're American. You... We were expected to break all our promises. We, we actually expect you guys to keep the promises. And it's like, and who and who who didn't have it? It just it was like Norway or something. Just sort of like who who didn't arm your spaceship? See Norway stick up their head, and everyone's just like, ah. Uh. No, it was Switzerland. Switzerland. That's right. It was Switzerland. One of them. <laughs> <sighs> Everyone just shakes their heads and is like, "But we funded all yours." <laughs> and then you see, you see Mia, the Mia space station. She's like, "That was meant to be destroyed. <laughs> it's been turned into a giant space battleship." <laughs> so yeah, do you know what project they worked on before Iron Sky? And there was no. Couple, wasn't there? Was there was, a, there was, I know there was a few. There but... was a couple of them, but the one they're most Actually, well known yeah. for. Is the Star Trek Babylon Five crossover? Star Trek in the Perkney? Is that it? Yeah, that. <laughs> I don't even haven't even heard of that until just then. Yeah, they got in. They, after making that movie, they got in so much trouble that they actually had to redo most of the CG, so it was no longer Star Trek versus Babylon Five ships. So it was, um, it was effectively Star Trek looking ships versus Babylon Five looking ships. If you know the two series, you know what's fighting what, but if you don't, it's different enough to sort of slip through the loopholes. But yeah, that that was that was also one of those sort of movies you walk away from slowly going, all righty then. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they got 150,000 funded already for the script of the second movie. Yeah, which is absolutely awesome. So, saying that, I'm not sure how they're going to fund, uh, crowdfund 30 million somebody got like what 120 grand to make potato salad so really yeah it was what oh. what did they actually get to do you remember i can't remember what it was i just pulled that number out of my butt but i just remember it being something absolutely astronomical wow. yeah he wanted he wanted 10 bucks to make potato salad yeah he, mm -hmm. or something ridiculous just he he wanted to make potato salad he didn't have the money so he went ah oh, fuck it i'll throw up a crowd fund and see what happens. Yeah. He got... It, it was 50, 60 grand US to make potato salad. It's like... Nice. Um, it no. Been half the country. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened was eventually he donated, donated the vast majority of it to charity, so that was a yeah. good thing. 
He did a massive potato, made a massive batch of potato salad, like maybe five thousand dollars worth of potato salad out of a hundred yeah. thousand, something ridiculous amount of money out of it, and then donated the rest to a charity. Yeah. Or to two charities, split it between them, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, which is uh, pretty good. Um, and other projects have been crowdfunded fairly well. You look at, uh, was it? Star Trek Horizon got crowdfunded. Um, uh, Nobility got crowdfunded. Nobility looks spectacular. Can't wait to talk to uh, Tori Higginson about Nobility. That's going to be And there's also been some pretty spectacular flops that got crowd... that were attempted to be crowdfunded. Oh, yeah. I'm not like, disagreeing with that. Ro like, uh, how many golds attempt to crowdfund... Robotech Academy, because they've spent all the money they made from Robotech in the past 20, 30 years on lawsuits with Microsoft. Wait, what? Yeah, they spent most of their money on lawsuits with Microsoft over a freaking uh, reference in a MechWarrior game. Okay. Just you have to elaborate on that one a little bit. I haven't heard anything about that. Well, if, you've, if you're a sci-fi gamer or anything like that, you're, I'm pretty sure you have some sort of idea about the classic games MechWarrior 4 and whatnot. Yeah. And its brethren. Now, it's been years, and we've actually lost the studio that was doing it. But there was a, a mech that was looked roughly like one of... The, like the Tomahawk Destroid from uh, Robotech. Harmony Gold got a little bit cut over this and decided to take them to court. And ironically, Harmony Gold actually managed to win. Now, Harmony Gold has also been blocking the makers of Macross from Japan from releasing any new stuff to English countries. Because when they bought the license, they bought it for X amount of years, and it covered all Macross series. They only wanted the first one. So, it was a miracle we got Macross Plus through, and that's also the reason why Macross 7, Macross Frontier, and nothing else Macross has been dubbed. And it's damn near impossible to get a good model kit from the same series because they're not licensed to be sold because they're technically you sell them in an English speaking country and you're stealing Har Harmony Gold's copyright on the products so on the rough designs so it's pretty screwed yeah that is but that is pretty sucky on the positive side um, the lease that they have on the on the macros front on the macros side is due to come up or is about to run out in the next two or three years. So we might get them in a couple of years. No promises on that, but yeah. we might. Yeah. Mm. Um, okay, I, yeah. I pulled up this potato salad guy. Yeah. 55,500. Sorry, yeah, 55,500 from 6,911 backers. By the time people have been viewing the page, 4.1 million visits. Wow. Yeah. And only one it was five bucks for a p to make yeah. his grandma's potato salad recipe. Yep. That is actually yeah. pretty funny. That's <laughs> uh, pretty, pretty insane. And he was going to make a video to show it. and yeah, it I believe he has. It's, it's, no. There's a page here with everything. Yeah, but that was part of the promise for, making, for pledging five dollars so he could make it, was he oh, would really? make the video... And, and say your name. Say well, your name. And give all the instructions on how to make the stuff. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is fair call. It's Most stupid. of them are Americans that pledge the money. Yeah, that shouldn't really surprise too many people. <laughs> Nothing against Americans. I, don't, I know quite a few Americans. Michael, the dude who set up the page, he's an American. But yeah, some of the stuff that comes out of America, I'm sorry, but you've really got to be embarrassed for. Like... We get our own amount coming out of Australia. We've got Tony Abbott. He, he's our George Bush that's worse. 
He's effectively George Bush post lobotomy with a couple of extra ears added onto the outside. <laughs> so yeah, th- th- there's that. But some of the stuff that comes out of America just makes you sit there and go, "What the actual f- is going on over there? <laughs> what are they smoking this time?" Yeah. Well, it's it's legal in some states now. Yeah. I, I, it's and quite again, f- welcome to funny. Queen. Welcome to Australia. We're living they, in a they, police nanny state here, so we'll just have to deal with it. Yeah. We get none of the good stuff. Sorry. They've got the top 10 most viewed projects on Kickstarter here. It's got Oya Game Console. I have no idea what that is. Do you uh, guys know the, what that the, is? The Ouya. I've actually got one. Um, it's effectively a, it's what's called a micro console. So it's sort of like a gaming console, like an Xbox or a PlayStation, but it runs off Android. So it's almost like if your Samsung Galaxy was a gaming console, would be the easiest way of looking at it. Cool. And it's got a HDMI out, Sec- it can support four controllers, and yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, second just, one is... I got it just to Sorry. fill out my console collection, because I I hoard <laughs> I consoles. Say, it's probably the only console I don't have, I think. <laughs> I've got a half dozen uh, consoles like that. You've got the... Uh, um, Amazon's got one, Google's got one... Um, there are half dozen others that are like that, but I've only got the Ouya. It only costs Damn. about like a hundred bucks. I'm, I'm not as geeky as I thought. <laughs> I'm missing all them. <laughs> um, second one is Pebble Watch. What? Pebble Watch. It sounds like somebody no idea- wants to get paid to sit there and stare at rocks. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. Third one, this blew me away. Veronica Mars movie. No, uh, no, just like, no, whoa, seriously, please it is... tell me that did not get crowdfunded. It, yeah, it, this made, well, it, that made it to the fourth, or actually it's the, the, the top 10 most viewed projects on Kickstarter history. Potato Salad got number four. Then you got Double Fine Adventure, which I don't know what that is, is number five. Project Eternity is number six. Penny Arcade is number seven. Reading Rainbow is number eight. That's number... that's really good. Reading Rainbow is really good. It helps kids learn how to read, and it's done by the dude who played Geordie in Star Trek. Cool. So, yeah. Now, that's a worthy project to back. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, number nine is Mighty Number Nine. Wow, that's ironic. Yeah, I saw that. I thought, <laughs> yeah, you're taking the piss. <laughs> could, could not play on that any better. Like... No. <laughs> <laughs> number 10 is oculus rift oh the oculus i want an oculus i can't wait to get an i'm oculus. not surprised by that one iota <laughs> the oculus has a lot of potential the question is are we actually going to get to see it live up to that potential now that it's owned by facebook yeah S- saying saying that did you see what the they were offering from the kickstarter for the second movie of iron sky um, I, there was Thanks. like some set visits and stuff like that if you paid lots of money. But I... the, the cheaper ones were actually quite good. Um, the Blu-ray shirts and various other items. And it was actually if if you worked out what you were going to pay for them over here by spending the sixty bucks or whatever they wanted, you would have actually got more goods than you would have been able to buy over here anyway. Yeah, probably. But so maybe that's gotta... that, maybe that's why they Take funded the... it so well. You got to take the exchange rate into account. You've still got to pay for postage on top of whatever you th- whatever you've paid to sort of get it sent over here. Yeah, true. They didn't say postage wasn't included. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's presumed that it's not. I don't know. Yeah. Some some say not. They did say airfares weren't included. <laughs> yeah. They did actually on every one that said you will be invited to the set. Airfares not included. One thousand five hundred dollars. Yeah. For a day on the set. Yeah. Still be a nice holiday if you could swing it. Oh, to get someone else to pay for it, it'd be laughing. Oh, uh, yeah. Thing is, I know someone who probably would. Nice. <laughs> My wife might pay for me just to get me out of the house. Okay. Point one, I don't have a wife anymore. Now. No. And I don't want to give any Amy any ideas because she just might. So what you're saying <laughs> is, 
Amy is the per is our guest. Hello, Amy. No, I didn't give Amy the details. Ah, uh, sorry, guest. You're not Amy. Anyway, time to. <laughs> <She's wrong. laughs> I'm just checking to make sure. Um. So, are we going to number two <laughs> with the dinosaurs? Yeah, oh let, my, we've oh covered over. Yeah, we've covered <laughs> just about everything else. Yeah. Oh so now it's time to get into the gimmick that they've shown us so far for Iron Sky uh, Two. Yeah. yeah, you've got look, the president of the states from Iron Sky is reptilian. Um, you can tell that by the hand she's wearing at the end. Um, she leaves as everything's getting nuked, which is where we left off in the end of Iron Sky. She goes to what Antarctica, goes inside a building, unlocks some shit, and then um, faces <laughs> faces off against. <laughs> Oh, well, not really face off, just sort of reports to would be a better way of putting it. Hitler riding on the back of a T Rex. Because then, why not? And then she she gives that weird hand signal and it's the T Rex and the T Rex waves back. Yeah. It was like, what the The T Rex does the Nazi salute, I know. <laughs> I was at a Nazi salute. I was like, what the hell? The T Rex is waving. <laughs> See, what I would have loved to seen is, instead of him being on a T-Rex, him being on a Spinosaurus. Now, hear me out on this. Back during World War II, the only Spinosaurus fossil was um, based in Germany. And it was destroyed during... Um, the, the Americans and the British bombed the building that was in Munich and destroyed that only specimen. Only sort of 12 months ago or so, they found a second specimen. So in almost 60 years... 70 years since they actually had one they could study. Now, the Spinosaurus is effectively 20% larger than a T-Rex and full of crappy pants runaway territory. And the best part is it's got proper arms. So if it does the Nazi salute, it can actually do it properly. <laughs> well, don't forget, uh... they're probably doing the T-Rex to take the piss out of Transformers and Michael Bay. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Because Iron Sky, even though it's dodgy, can still do a better deal with the t with a T Rex than goddamn Michael Bay did with with it in Transformers. Yeah, that was very disappointing. Um, probably. Have you gone for that? Well, what I was gonna say is the, the 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 problem with Michael Bay is he's only got one formula, and his formula Explosions. is everything explodes, boobs. Yeah. Boobs, okay. ass, explosions. Boobs and butt. Boobs and butt. <laughs> explosions? Yeah, okay. The, the, the <laughs> biggest, in moderation. The biggest problem with the newest Transformers movie, and I'm, I'm, I'll, this is the last I'll harp on it and I'll move on, I swear, um, was that he intentionally made the, f the lead female underage and then brought the Ooh. entire movie to a halt to outline as to why the guy can legally do her. Well, that's true. There, there's, a, there's an actual scene in that movie where he goes, actually, under this statute, we could be together because we've no, I've known her since we were both sort of underage. And it's like, um, let's just cross out underage and write 18. Problem solved. No, no grinding halt to the to the plot there. Next, mm. next problem with this movie. It's just mm. ah, that movie. Yeah, see, I, I, I haven't watched past the second one. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, the, 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 <laughs> Funny the, that. The, the tr I've noticed something about the Transformers movies. They're sort of like the Star Trek movies. They go good, bad, goodish, bad. Um, yeah, that's pretty much. They've only had four. So, did you ever watch yeah. Crusade that came on after Babylon Five, the series? That was like that. It brilliant episode, absolute shit episode, brilliant episode, absolute shit episode, and it just kept doing that. I was like, no. Uh, no, I haven't actually. You haven't it's, watched it's, it's, it's my turn to say I haven't actually seen something. Oh no, that was actually I really enjoyed every second episode. <laughs> it was techno majors, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, it was just so well done every second episode, and it was just like no. And even I had my wife watching it, and she was like, "How come they keep doing shit every second episode?" Uh, it's, it's sort of weird. A lot of shows take a little while to sort of get their to get the ball rolling, and you'll notice that, like, even Stargate had some stinkers in the first couple of series. But after, sort of, season three, they found their groove, for the most part, right through yeah. till 
the end of Season 8. I still stand by that the end of Season 8 should have been a hard finish. End of SG1. Season 9 should be Stargate Command. And they should have not rebooted it, but sort of semi-rebooted it. Decentralized it from one team and had it focusing on a larger sort of galactic picture, if you know what I mean. Because we'd reached that point where we could do that at the end of Season 8. And still told yes. the story, the Ori storyline could have still easily been told. But instead of focusing on one team, you focus on sort of three or four teams. It would have been a lot, sort of, it would have been a lot cooler. But, yeah. You see, I stopped watching that when um, Daniel Jackson left. Then he came back. And then he came back. And then he came back. But that was that whole political thing, wasn't it? Yeah. He wanted, he wanted a more... No, no. Interesting role, wasn't no, it? Is that what um, it was? What, what happened? No, it was the public outcry over no. Danny Dion. No, no, what happened was Michael Shanks oh, really? um, got the shits with his character going nowhere. Yeah. And he wanted to spend more time with with his family. And he's mm-hmm. like, okay, so you guys aren't taking my character anywhere interesting. It's it's not going the way I like would like it to go. So I'm pulling the plug. I'm walking away. I'm choosing to do this willingly under my own sort of steam so you give you guys a chance to sort of write up write my character a decent ending which is why he ascended they always intended on him sort of coming back and doing guest spots but they didn't really have a way of getting rid of him without killing him off so they went yeah. ascended and that's why he sort of pops back what i think it's half a dozen times since season six yeah season six is the one yeah, where he's gone see bits and pieces where he was coming back and the ghost there was also a massive public outcry oh yeah as soon as he was Nemec. as soon as he was gone there was massive drama now don't get me wrong Corin Nemec was a good good character had a good character and a good story behind him but people it just didn't seem right him just yeah. jumping in and taking Danny's spot like he wound up having to do yeah yeah it did, it did come across almost like, oh shit, we need to get rid of someone, we'll bring someone else in, we don't care and the, who we bring in type thing. That's what it felt like. And the sad part is they fell into the very same trap when Richard Dean Anderson left. and they That was in, all medical too. They, they Oh, Richard Dean Anderson left because he wanted to spend more time really? with his family. He noticed his family had grown up and he wanted to sort of spend a lot more time with them so that they could grow up. I actually met him and talked to him about... Oh, you, uh, when was that 2012 early 2012 March of 2012 and talked about it and he mm. said that the main reason he left was because he wanted to spend more time with his daughter because he spent so much time filming Stargate that he'd get home and he'd realise the daughter had done all these new things that he'd missed out on and he didn't want to miss out on that anymore and about yeah. the time that Stargate Universe started the daughter was old enough to recognise all these sacrifices that he'd made and turned around to him and said okay dad I know what you've done Thanks for spending so much time with me, but you can go back to work now. <laughs> and that just happened to be about the same time Star Trek Universe really. started. Um, so yeah, which is also the same sort of time when he started doing conventions again, or well, mm. abroad would be a better way of putting it. But see, back with Babylon Five, I don't know. For, after the first season, um, the main captain left. And they actually, I think last year they released the fact that he left due to psychological, mental reasons. Wow. Um, before that, it was, I thought they'd written him out of the story to bring him back as this, or the one, or whatever they call it, the, the three and the one. But it was actually due to the fact that he was having mental issues. Yeah. And until he passed away... Um, the producer said he wouldn't let anyone know what happened until he passed away. And that's what they did. When he passed away, they let people know what happened. Yeah, that's, that's that's pretty good of the producer. It's so, like, um, oh, what was it? One of the Law and Orders. Criminal Intent, I think it was. Um, the main guy... There's so was many that... Law and Orders. <laughs> yeah, I know. The main, it, it was the same actor that was in the original Men in Black who played the cockroach guy. Um, he was in that for years as the main sort of detective guy and he had a major mental breakdown on set one day and they had to stop filming and the show was almost cancelled and that's when that show got a major rework was because the actor sort of went off the deep end 
started killing everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. almost. <laughs> CSI on stage. Speaking Real of off, speaking of off the deep end, we're going um, off topic. Didn't uh, yeah, we're way off topic. <laughs> we've 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 still technically got another Halo games to get to, but there's only like nine minutes left, so it's it's almost. Oh, I might get to them next time, I reckon. No, yeah, we'll do that maybe next week. Whoops. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. <laughs> People have got something to look forward to when they yeah. when they read this or watch this during the week, listen to this during the week. They go, "Halo, oh!" And they get to the end and go, "Buggers!" And they're like, "Oh, next week." Yeah. Okay, uh, well, well, my let's, bad. <laughs> let's let's skip Halo and jump straight <laughs> to Iron Man versus Astro Boy. The... Hey, two two seconds before you do that. Do you know the uh, Nazis with the dinosaurs? Have you played that game with the Nazis and the dinosaurs? No, I haven't. I, I wanted to get my hands on it, but I also I can't afford it. it. I downloaded it. <laughs> I haven't played it yet. I, <laughs> I have the Iron Sky game. Is it? Oh, seriously? Yeah, for PC, it's on Steam. Yeah? I think it's like five or six bucks. And what do you, you do? do? You fly around in little spaceships, blowing the stuff out of the Nazi flying saucers and zeppelins. How is that all? <laughs> Pretty much. Hot you've, women got, in. you've got a little <laughs> ship that's maybe, I don't know, roughly equivalent to the Apollo capture with guns, and it's got a freaking jump drive. What the hell? Uh, uh, <laughs> Why not? Disappointing. <laughs> Again, I'm raiding Tony Stark's locker for the equipment. <laughs> Spe- speaking of raiding Tony Stark's locker for equipment, Iron Man versus Astro Boy. Who would we put money on? Now, this is Iron Man from the movies. To make it a little bit fairer on Astro Boy, um, who would you guys back? Versus, versus Astro Boy from the, the 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 movie or Astro Boy from the series? Uh, Astro- we didn't calculate this one, Astro did we? In the series, I don't. I don't. To be perfectly blunt, I yeah, don't really know either. Him so. and um, his brother. Yeah, but like you got Astro Boy from the movie. Astro Boy from the movie is a bit of a porn. I'm sorry. He made the kids. Astro Boy from the cartoon series was much more gas. Just really kicked us. Okay, well, Astro Boy from the from the cartoon series versus the live action Avengers movie series uh, Iron Man. Depending on which unit I say Iron, on which uh, armor armor he's wearing, I say Iron Man. I don't know. Astro Boy was a robot as such. So Iron Man's got the human factor, so Astro Boy can pretty much make him bleed if he gets the right movie. Well, we know Iron Man can be beaten. He does eventually mm-hmm. run out of juice. We know Astro Boy eventually runs out of juice. I think the easiest way to decide this is tank missile! <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Iron Man wins. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that's a reference, for those who don't get it, to the how it should have ended for Iron Man. If you haven't seen the how it should have ended for the original Iron Man movie, stop listening, jump on YouTube, look up how it should have ended, and watch the Iron Man video. It's funny as. All of their videos are funny as. Don't tell them to stop listening. Tell them to watch it after. They just did. They'll come come back eventually. (laughs) We've still got a guest listening, so... Hello, guest. (laughs) You, you sure I haven't got that on the other computer by mistake? Yeah, quite probably. <laughs> but no, Astro Astro Boy, because I mean, it also depends because Astro Boy developed quite a bit during the the comic series as well, and so did his brother. Yeah. So well, you can say the same that Iron Man has as well, not just in tech, because he's gone through quite a bit and going through quite a yeah, range. He's such of an arrogant prick. I just want Astro Boy to kick his ass. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> fair enough on those grounds. He is an arrogant prick. If he wasn't he an arrogant prick, would he be Tony Stark? No. And yeah. that's what you love about him, isn't and, it? And to be exactly. Honest, it's part of the package. Yeah. See, like... I say that to my wife. It's like, that's why I'm so wonderful and she should love me. Because I'm such an arrogant prick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Tony Stark, can you think of any character on screen, with the exception of maybe Sherlock, from the TV series, um, the BBC series, BBC Sherlock, as opposed to the god awful elementary American ripoff. Not the point. Can you think of any actor that's been as well cast for their role as Robert Downey Jr. for Iron Man? 
I have no. seen a couple, but not. They've come pretty close, but not quite. It just Danny Robert Danny Jr. was born to play Iron Man. Doesn't yeah. matter what yeah. he was beforehand, he was born for Iron Man. Yep, I'd have to agree with that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Before I forget again, I was going to mention it earlier, but I forgot because it worked out horribly. Uh, the final results on the voting of the primary weapon for the enemy ship is Turbo Laser's first Wraith plasma weapons came second, and they were pretty much the only two things that got voted on. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Turbo Lasers. What were the other items? T- t- um, Turbo Lasers had, so if I remember correctly, seven votes. Wraith Blasters had six votes. There was. Where the heck did I put those pictures? Um, ship. Ship. The pictures are disappeared. You know, Carlos. this brings us to that thing we were talking about last week yeah, about the amount of people we've got on our pages and the amount of people that actually see our posts. Yeah. Because that is just shocking. Well, the old. Well, it's like I said last week, the old um, posts like this that we did for the good ship had 200 comments. That I mm. had to go through per thing. This is this one I had twenty. Well, the um thing I was doing this week with my kids with the steampunk outfit on with the photos, I've pretty much been posting that everywhere, and it went on someone's site. A friend she actually posted it on her site and hung it onto the actual. You know when you yeah pin it to the wall yeah pin it yeah, and I went from twenty likes up to fifty likes within two days. Yeah. So it is doable, but yeah, pretty much she's like, this is a long time member. He's awesome. His kids are awesome. And next minute, 30, 30 likes on this picture. Yeah. But she's got two and a half thousand people in a group. Well, to put it this way, the this week gone, the most reached post we had was the Hobbit trailer. It was shared. Yeah. It was liked. It was commented on and it reached 1700 views. That's nice. That's a good amount. No, it's nothing. Go back 12 yeah. months on the same sort of post and we'd get 10,000. Ooh. Okay, yeah. Go f- yeah, I had 1,700. I'd be laughing. <laughs> go, 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 go back sort of... Well, think of it this way. We've got 5,500 likes. Assuming every single person that saw that post was one of the people that liked our page, that's not even a quarter. Well, a bit over a but quarter. I've, I've barely seen a post on your page for the last two years. That's my point. I post on there daily. Literally, every day. I know, because I look I at post. your page. <laughs> so, and yeah, it's just sort of... Frustrating. Yeah, very frustrating. If Facebook wasn't trying to scam thousands of dollars out of us each year, that'd be nice. Yeah, well, especially when we're, only, we're a non-for-profit, pretty much. Oh, right now we're a no profit. Mm. Nothing coming in, nothing coming out. So. We're doing this for the love of it. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit like, bit, bit like me writing my novels. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, we should, we should sort of do that for a, an episode down the road. Just make up a random sci fi story and we just make the story up as we go for an hour. I love that idea. I'll start, but it won't be before. Before there was dust. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've, I've actually got a, I've actually got a framework idea that I that I'd love to sort of do that for. Um, Sweet. Do we need a chick on there for that though? <laughs> female person on a sci-fi podcast. We might get <laughs> viewers. We would, ha- we would have to go triple X on the rating. <laughs> probably, I could probably, <laughs> I could probably, I could probably get you a couple. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we're in the last 60 seconds, so, um, of the podcast, so we're... Be good one viewer! <laughs> yeah, have fun one, have, have fun our only viewer. We shall see you next week, and hopefully we weren't boring, because I've got a sneaky suit for viewer. But, yeah, you get that. I blame Stuart for not being here. Yep, it's all his fault. Yep. <laughs> it's have not a good my week, guys. Anything. Uh, see ya. So, have fun, and we shall see you next week. So long, and... Thanks for all the...